affordable excellence. Best budget Android phones for 2023. Getting the best product on demand can be challenging. And well, that's why we're here to help you. And these are the recommended products on the market. Don't forget to check out the description below for more information and its pricing. Best overall, Google Pixel 6a. The Google Pixel 6a is the greatest budget phone overall, assuming you can surpass its dismal battery life. The camera usually stands out on Google's inexpensive handsets and deserves credit. The Pixel 6a, like its predecessors, uses computational photography to generate some of the greatest shots in this price range. Its images can even compete with those taken by much more costly phones. Additionally, the Pixel 6a supports a night mode, unlike the iPhone SE. The Pixel 6a is powered by a Tensor chipset as well. The Google Pixel 6 flagships, which start at $150 higher than the Pixel 6a, have the same chipset. Affordable phones often feature inconsistent cameras that wilt in low light. The Pixel 6a will give you a good result in nearly any scenario, including at night via the night sight mode. Given the price, it's no surprise that the base model Pixel 4a lacks some perks, such as wireless charging, but it's a tremendous value for a phone with no significant flaws. Being a Google device, the Pixel 6a comes with an assured five years worth of security updates. It has a solid camera performance and outdoes the iPhone SE 2022's camera when it comes to night photography. Best value, Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. The Samsung Galaxy A14 is cheaper than the Galaxy A54, which tops our list but shares many of the same upsides. And if your budget won't stretch to more than $200, it's the phone to buy. The Galaxy A14 is made entirely from plastic, but this will increase durability. It isn't slippery to hold, and a textured finish keeps it mostly fingerprint free. Like the Galaxy A54, the Galaxy A14 leans into Samsung's design for the Galaxy S23. The triple lens camera array on the back contains a 50 megapixel main camera, plus a pair of mostly useless 2 megapixel macro and depth cameras. The main camera still takes attractive photos you'll happily share online. A 6.6 inch AMOLED screen with a 90 hertz refresh rate dominates the front of this phone. It runs on Android 13 with one UI, which will be updated until 2027. For a phone at this price, this is a good commitment, and along with 5G connectivity, it means the A14 should last for several years before it needs replacing. The MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor is great for normal use, but may struggle if you want to play intensive games or multitask. And the 5000 mAh battery has enough power to last two days before it needs recharging. You don't get features like wireless charging, and the phone obviously isn't going to compete with flagships, but it represents excellent value, provided your expectations aren't stratospheric. Best with a stylus, Motorola Moto G Stylus. At 6.8 inches, the G Stylus is a big phone. The display clocks in at 1080 by 2460 with a 90 Hertz refresh rate, which is a nice step up from the 720p screens we've seen on most budget phones lately. The IPS screen still looks good with nice and vibrant colors. The brightness is also sufficient enough to see in direct sunlight. Black comes across more like dark gray instead of a perfect OLED black, but it's still good for casual content consumption, as long as you have headphones. While the body is clearly styled to resemble the glass sandwich design of high-end phones, the matte frame and shiny back are both plastic. At first, we thought the pre-installed Moto app was advertising bloatware, but it introduces you to gesture controls with links to turn them on or off in the settings. Even though the camera bump proudly proclaims 50 megapixels, you'll only get all those pixels in the ultra res camera mode. By default, it shoots in 12.5 megapixel via pixel binning. In addition to the main shooter found in the middle of the camera bump, at the top, you'll find an 8 megapixel ultra wide pulling double duty for macro shots and a 2 megapixel depth sense lens at the bottom. There aren't enough improvements for this to be worth trading in your old Moto G stylus and the chipset is more of a lateral change from last year's Snapdragon processor than an upgrade. Suppose you absolutely need a stylus for some reason. In that case, I'd consider the slightly more expensive G Stylus 5G from late last year instead. But if you're dead set on that $300 price point, this isn't a terrible choice. Best Design, OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite. The flat sides of the Nord CE3 Lite 
help the phone look more luxurious than it actually is. Although holding the phone reveals its cheaper materials, such as the plastic of its side rails or the glass plastic laminate back panel. Flat-sided phones can sometimes be a bit tricky to handle, since they don't fit in your hand as neatly as devices with curved edges. But with the OnePlus's curved back, beveled sides, and relatively light 6.8 ounce weight, the Nord CE3 Lite still nestles in your palm nicely. The OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite's price tag is small, but its display sure isn't. The front of the phone is taken up by a 6.72 inch screen, which is just as large as the one on the flagship OnePlus 11 while also offering the same maximum 120 Hz refresh rate. However, the CE3 Lite's panel is obviously a cheaper relation when you drill down into the other specs, as well as capturing full 108 megapixel shots and more compact 12 megapixel everyday photos. OnePlus claims that using this resolution allows the phone to have a three time lossless digital zoom. We'll show you what that looks like shortly. OnePlus keeps its essential characteristics intact with the Nord CE3 Lite offering speedy charging and a surprisingly good display for a low price. Sadly, that only makes the main weaknesses of an often subpar photography, weak chipset, and unfortunately short battery life all the more painful. Best Performance – POCO X5 Pro 5G Despite its affordable price tag, the design of the X5 Pro feels very familiar compared to other flagships. POCO's offerings haven't always looked so great in the past, so the brand's taken an opportunity to refine things a little. This year's smartphone takes on a more rectangular shape with squared off edges. The shape of the phone feels a lot more premium, akin to the Galaxy S23 and iPhone 14, although a little slimmer. On the upper left side of the rear, you'll find the camera bump with all three of the sensors and a flash. Over on the right hand side, you'll find the brand's signature seal of ownership. Images taken with the main snapper are crisp and boast vibrant colors. Pictures are bright too, thanks to the larger 1 1.52 inch sensor and an f1.9 aperture. The main snapper lets a lot of light in, capturing the type of picture you'd expect from a more expensive mid-ranger, or even a cheap flagship. Within the X5 Pro, you'll find the mid-range Snapdragon 778G chipset. This processor is a step up from the one used in the standard X5, but rather unsurprisingly, it can't match the performance of more premium options such as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Charging is pretty fast on the X5 Pro. In fact, Poco likes to call it turbo charging. It's 67 watt fast charging via a cable, which is rather unique for a phone at this price point. At the end of the day, you're unlikely to be disappointed with the Poco X5 Pro as a mid-range smartphone. It's ramped up from last year and holds its own during everyday use and more challenging tasks. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to hear more from us, please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon to get notified of our new videos.